To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Let us sing together, Soldiers of Christ, arise. As a people of faith, may we share together in the opening prayer. Almighty God, our rock and fortress, your banner over us is love and truth. You summon us to stand firm on the faith once delivered. You command us to put on the whole armor of God that we might serve as your strong witnesses in this world. Forgive us when we shrink back from the challenge and help us engage the powers with truth and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we stand with those around the world and those who have gone before us as we proclaim the Apostles' Creed, our affirmation, our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the next to come to judge the quick and the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints,
Please be seated. We are a people of faith and love and joy. We cherish the opportunity to pray, to be in communion with our God, to connect to God and, and share God's uh, hopes and dreams for us. We want to give God thanks and praise this day. Um, I know that we have a, at least a couple of birthday guys this week. Matt, happy birthday to you this week. And Jake, happy birthday to you this week. Happy birthday. <laughs> what, what, what day is it? Tomorrow. You share a birthday with Mr. Rodney Kemp. That's a special birthday, Jake. We also rejoice because Loretta Bailey is sitting here, and boy, that is an answer to prayer, and we are grateful, grateful. Other prayers? I'm going to Virginia this week to visit my oldest living relative who will be 105, no walker, no cane, and full mental capacity. Oh, wow. wow. I might not be able to sit next to her, maybe it might be through a glass wall, but we're celebrating. 105. What a blessing to be in all that health and with her fact. Wow. Praise God. And safe travels for you. Other, yes, Brenda? Thank you so much. Uh, Earl and Doris Wade, uh, Earl's son, Kenny, uh, died this week. And we pray for all of the Wades, uh, just in, in asking God's comfort and grace to be upon all. Other prayers? Absolutely. Prayers for, for Susan and John. Uh, Susan Craver, she uh, is going to be uh, moving into another phase of rehabilitation, so praise God for that. But we just want to pray for continued help for her and strength for John and daughter Beth. Um, also for Al Willis. Uh, Al, if you're worshiping with us, we, we continue to pray for you and Pat. Other prayers? Michelle, Michelle Honeycutt, thank you, Patrick, for uh, Candace Fulcher. Candace was supposed to have a heart procedure, but the doctors determined they could do it with medicine. So that's a good thing for her, and we pray that works. Other prayers? Kingswood. For the Kingswood ministry, for those children and the teachers. I think one of the most exciting things I heard uh, was that on Thursday, some of our kindergartners took two-hour naps. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure whether I heard the kindergartners or the kindergarten teachers took. <laughs> or both. Both, yeah. We also want to pray for the people of Louisiana. Hit once on the west, and now it looks like to be hit on the east, and we pray for them. We pray for the people out west and the fires that are out there. For our whole country, uh, from sea to shining sea, just we pray. Uh, we also pray uh, for all of our uh, first responders, emergency personnel, whether they're out west, down south, or right here at home, the people that take care of us uh, and help us in our emergencies and needs. We thank you. Let's go to the Lord together in prayer. It is so amazing, O oh Lord, that you hear us, that you choose to open your ear and attend to the cries of your people. We thank you for your compassion and grace poured out upon us, for your steadfast presence in our times of need, for your truth that is the foundation of our life. We pray for those that have been named this day and those whom we name in our hearts and for those that are being named aloud in homes throughout our community and beyond. We ask, O oh Lord, not just for your work in our lives, but that you would work through our lives as you extend your grace and care to others. We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aide, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Bella, hey, good morning. We have to ask you to stay in your seat. We can't have you come up for the children's moment yet. But if you're worshiping with us at home, kids, feel free to get as close to the screen as you possibly can so you can see me really good. All right, I'm going to hold up some stuff so you can see it. We sent, kids, everybody in the church a present. Do you like presents, Bella? Yeah, I like presents. They're fun. And we gave everybody this bag. And kids, if you didn't get one, have your mom or your dad call me. But one of the things in the bag is a craft kit. So it starts like this. Do you know what this is? It's a shield. And there's some instructions on how you can make a reminder for yourself about all the different pieces of the armor of God. So in the morning, when I get ready to come to work, right? I brush my teeth, I fix my hair, I maybe put some makeup on, I put clothes on, you put a bow in your hair, we put shoes on our feet. There's all kinds of ways that we get ready for the day. We put on things that other people can see. But we're going to talk this morning about something else that we should put on every day. And it's not necessarily something we can see with our eyes, but it's something that we feel in our hearts and with our spirits. It's the armor of God. And no matter what else might happen to us in our lives throughout the day, when we put on the armor of God, we know that God is with us no matter where we go. And God will strengthen us and protect us no matter what else might happen. So there's some different pieces. Pastor Powell is going to talk today about the belt of truth. We talk about the, the feet ready to pre- preach peace, the boots say readiness on them. The shield of faith, we got to grab that on the way out the door. The helmet of salvation, we got to put that on before we get ready to leave the house. The breastplate of righteousness to cover our hearts. The sword of the spirit. So kids at home, you guys can put this together and we hope that you do that sometime today and this morning. I've already seen some awesome pictures on Facebook of your smiling faces holding up your craft kits that you've made. So thanks for sharing that with us. Can we pray together this morning, kids? Gracious God, thank you for the ways you clothe us with your righteousness and with your truth and with your holiness. 
Help us remember before we go out the door to put on the armor of God so that we'll be ready to face the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, we come now to a time in our service where we remember to give back God's tithes and our offerings as a part of our worship life together. We're still not passing plates around the sanctuary, but you can give here in person as you go out either door, there's a basket. You're also welcome, even at this time if you wanted to, to pull out your phone and give on our church app or give on our church website. It is a part of our worship life together to give back to God, God's tithes and our offerings. Let's offer up our hearts in this moment of worship.
continue to stand and worship through singing Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. Please be seated. So I invite you to give ear now to this reading from God's holy word from the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, your word is like a two-edged sword cutting and dividing piercing our hearts with your truth. Shine your light so that there may be no shadow of falseness in us and empower us to be not just recipients but agents of your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. In case you have missed it, There's a pandemic going on. You all know what a pandemic is. It's it's an epidemic that occurs worldwide and usually affects a large number of people. Well, we all know that because to one degree or another, this pandemic is really impacting all of us. It's no respecter of gender or age or nationality or race or wealth or intelligence or social class. But I'm not talking about the coronavirus. 
The pandemic that I am most concerned about is the disease of sin and death. The abandonment of morality. The abandonment of truth. And the embrace of incivility. This pandemic truly affects each and every one of us. And it has a 100% rate of mortality. You see, I think that's what the Apostle Paul was talking about in the 6th chapter of Ephesians, verse 12, when he said, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the rulers and the authorities and the powers of this dark world, and it's against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, you read for yourselves the entirety of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It's a wonderful way to spend this afternoon because in it, the apostle communicates about this new and transformed reality that has been established for us in Christ. In chapter 1, he says, In Christ we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. In chapter 2, he says, Because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy has made us alive in Christ Jesus. In chapter 5, he says, Be imitators of God as dearly beloved children and live a life of love. I could go on and on because Ephesians is just full of the declarations and assurances of God. But then there's this verse in chapter 1, verse 10. To be put into effect, all this will come to pass. When the times have reached their fulfillment, when God decides to bring everything in heaven and earth together under one head, even Christ. Friends, we, we live in that promise. We live in that confidence that God has, in fact, already accomplished in his purpose all of eternity for his new creation through Jesus. And we know that, that we and all the world is invited to be a part of that eternity or not. In the meantime is where we live. In the here and now. Where we live each and every day in the midst of the pandemic of sin and death. And so Paul writes in Ephesians 6.10... Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. You know, in the world today, lots of us are trying to learn certain uh, practices, some that, that uh, are about self-care, some that may be about concern for others, and some that are just about being courteous. You know, wearing a mask, washing our hands frequently, or observing physical distancing. I recently read this quip. There isn't a mask big enough to protect us from everything going on in the world today. We need to suit up with the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. That's our focus for the next six weeks. For this season in the fall because we believe these principles established in the armor of God are core values that we share as disciples of Jesus. They are for us his provision that we might stand strong in these days, particularly days of spiritual battle. And so as you heard, we put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet that are fitted with readiness by the virtue of the gospel of peace, with the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Apostle Paul had in his mind and shared this based on the image of the Roman legionnaire. That was a frequent sight all around uh, first century Israel, particularly all around the holy city of Jerusalem. And when you saw a Roman soldier in his full regalia, it was an awesome sight, 
a fearful sight because in it, he represented all of that might of Rome. And the very first piece of equipment that the Roman soldier put on was his leather belt. Like our belts, it uh, cinches up and holds the pants up and gathers all of the rest of the clothing. But even more than that, on this belt, there were these leather straps dangling down on which there were little brass plates. In fact, if you, um, if you receive that in your packet, it's a wonderful Bible study aid uh, that talks all about the armor of God. And you can see right there on, on the front the leather strap with the dangling leather and, and the brass plates. And this was important because it covered the soldier's most vulnerable areas. The, sword, the belt was protection. And it provided uh, security for the soldier and, and also a, a place to hang other pieces of armor. The belt of truth. Truth. That's where we begin. I believe that we're in some trouble right now in this world about truth. People don't know who to believe. People don't know if they believe anything. And there are people even making up their own truth. And according to God, they're staking their lives, especially their eternal lives, on made-up truths. And you want to know why truth is the first battleground for us? Because the evil one hates the truth. You can call him by any name you want to. Lucifer, the angel of darkness or light, the, the Satan... The evil one, he's also known as the devil or the deceiver. In John 8, it says about this one, In him there is no truth, because when he lies, he's speaking his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Proof of that? Go all the way back to the beginning. To Genesis chapter 3. Remember? The deceiving of the servant, of the serpent, and of the cooperation of humanity in those lies? Oh, that's not what God really said. You can add or take away from what God says and make that your new truth. In fact, the truth, and this was his greatest lie, is that God just doesn't want you to be like God, that is, your own gods. Surely the truth is that you can be God too, and you can set your own truths to obey or not, and without consequence. And we know how that turned out for humanity. Swallow the lie, and death comes. Cast out. From the presence of God alone on our own. To be honest with you, there was a time that I did not believe in the devil. I thought I was a pretty smart young man, maybe too smart for myself. I, I thought the devil was just a made up human construct. You know, just a metaphor, a symbol, maybe uh, representing the collective evilness of all of us inside. And then I read a couple of books by an author by the name of Frank Peretti. Uh, one of his was This Present Darkness. And reading that alongside the scripture opened my eyes to the spiritual realm and, and to the spiritual warfare that's occurring. It made me understand why once upon a time my dad told me this. Son, you will lose every battle that you don't even know you're in. 
with my eyes now opened, I, I saw and I experienced and I believe in the reality of the evil one. In fact, the very first lie of the devil is that he doesn't really exist. So you don't need to worry about him. The evil one hates truth. And we are in challenging times, for in today's world, truth seems to be based on one of two opposing narratives. Upon the Bible, that truth and morality is grounded in the character of God. It is objective and it is universal. And that truth is known by discovering the nature of God as he reveals it himself in his word. And then there's the cultural narrative. That truth, it's an individual thing. It's subjective and situational. The truth is known just because you choose to believe it and through personal experience. In other words, you, you can make up your own truth. And not only is truth being redefined, but so is tolerance. According to the Bible, tolerance is recognizing the value of and respecting others even when you don't share their values, beliefs, and practices. But in the contemporary cultural understanding, tolerance now means that we have to recognize and respect that every individual's values and truth claims and beliefs and practices are equally valid. Friends, what God's word says is that God is truth. Truth is what God determines. And it is absolute. I love how Ravi Zacharias argues this point when he's in a debate. And somebody screams at him, there are no absolutes. And Ravi responds gently as he always did. Is that absolute? <laughs> you see, such an assertion collapses under logic. Or if somebody says, you must be tolerant of my truth? The answer is no, I'm not. I may be tolerant of you because that means respectful. That means civil and gracious and seeking to understand. But that doesn't mean that I think your opinion is truth. Well, you don't have to agree with me, but we'll be tolerant of each other. But there cannot be truth that are two opposing realities. One of my teaching principles is everybody has a right to an opinion. But having an opinion doesn't make it right. It's just an opinion. I will tell you that Jesus has been amazingly tolerant with me but never tolerant of my sin or false beliefs a father and son pair Josh and Seth McDonald printed up some t-shirts I think they took a little bit of a chance here because on the front in big letters they post it said intolerance is a beautiful thing on the back it said Mother Teresa was intolerant of poverty. Bono was intolerant of AIDS. Nelson Mandela was intolerant of apartheid. Martin Luther King Jr. was intolerant of racism. Jesus was intolerant of bigotry. Truth. Here are some core truths of the Christian faith. There is one God, 
and it's not us. Only God determines what is right and wrong. Not us. Not our feelings or our experiences or our opinions. God is the author of life. God and only God determines the beginning and the end of each life. God and only God is able to declare the value of each human being, not us. So anything that strikes at that truth like racism or abortion is an affront to God's heart. Only God in Jesus Christ saves. We do not save ourselves, cannot. No matter how good we think we are or, or how not so bad we think we are, only the forgiveness and grace of Jesus saves. Heaven and hell are real. Whether you believe it or not. But if you don't believe it, are you willing to stake your eternity on that opinion? God made us for eternity. And God invites us to share eternity with him or away from him. And he gave us the gift of faith so that we could make the decision. Truth. So brothers and sisters, be, be on guard, be alert, be watchful. Because 2 Timothy 4 says, for there's going to come a time when people will not endure sound doctrine or truth. Instead, because they have itching ears, they will seek out teachers who just tell them what they want to believe. And they will turn away their ears from the truth. Paul says, Put on the whole armor of God and start with the belt of truth. Back to the pandemic. Everybody is just waiting for some vaccine for the coronavirus. But I have some good news for you. There is already a cure for the pandemic of sin and death. It is the gift of forgiveness and new life offered to us in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am life. So come to the table. And open up your, your mind and your hearts and your lives. And receive the truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we are yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let us give thanks. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a good and It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. 
You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When our love failed and we turned away, your love remained steadfast. You made covenant to be our sovereign God, delivered us from captivity, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup, again gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and the world for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with each other, one with Christ, and one in service to your world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. When we break the bread, is it not a means of sharing in the body of Christ? When we give thanks over the cup, is it not a means of sharing in the blood of Christ? I invite you to receive the meal of grace. Lord, we thank you for this holy meal where you have given yourself to us. Help us now, having feasted, to give ourselves to this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand now and sing together. Stand up, stand up for Jesus.
this invitation now at each of our services, I do so again. Your pastors love to be in conversation with you about matters of faith, matters of truth, matters of our ministry together. If you would like to have that conversation, send a text or an email to any of us. We will gladly engage with you with grace and truth and love um, so that we might all grow together. Receive this blessing. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sustaining fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and forevermore. Amen.